Hello everyone and welcome to the program. This is Politics Today Live from Channels Television's studio in the nation's capital, Abuja. I'm Sean Wakimbalue. Well, bringing you some of uh, the major political discussion uh, for tonight. Uh, let's begin with the story coming from Imo State in the southeast region of the country where a federal high court sitting in a worried Imo State capital has struck out a suit filed by Mr. Clifford Aze, the governorship candidate of the Democratic Alternative Party and the just concluded governorship elections in Imo State seeking to stop the inauguration uh, ceremony of the Imo State governor-elect Emeka Ihiria on May 29. Delivering the judgment, the presiding judge, Justice Tijani Regime, says the plaintiff Clifford Aze has no legal right to approach the uh, regular court for a post-election matter which he brought before it. While striking out the suit, Justice Regime says the court lacks the jurisdiction to entertain the suit, he, however, awarded the sum of uh, 5 million naira to the plaintiff. We continue to appraise the Buhari's government for term in office and look forward to the second term is very critical and setting an agenda on what Nigerians want to see the president and his team prioritize on as May 29 knocks on our doors. Some of the ministers of the Buhari government have been speaking on what they have done and the priorities of for the Minister of Education. He admits that a failure in the enrollment of out-of-school children. Take a listen to him. I promise that we will try to bring the number of out-of-school children to about half. I must apologize. We have failed in that. But I believe we have put everything in place for the next minister to achieve this. And he will do it because uh, last year in Paris, the president promised pump more money into education, and that is I think what we need to do the plans that we have already drawn up. The second area is youth and adult literacy. Equally to study in the fact that Nigeria has an estimated 60.5 million adults and youth who are illiterate. This represents about 39% of Nigeria's population. The result of them in the last four years, we have stepped up sensitization and advocacy visits across states of the Federation as part of our measures to revitalize youth and other literacy programs. Well, um, that's the education minister. Let's talk about the health. Well, the Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewale, says the problem with the nation's tertiary health institution is overcrowding, not poor quality of health care. According to Professor Adewale, teaching hospitals are overburdened because of lack of proper funding and attention to primary health care. The health minister who appeared before the Senate at plenary says only 10% of Nigerians need to go to teaching hospitals, but that is not the case as Nigerians have no confidence in primary and secondary health systems, thereby opting to go straight to tertiary hospitals, which are only supposed to take care of complicated cases. He accused state governments of abandoning health care to the federal government, pointing out that 14 states are yet to show interest in the basic health care fund. For them to function effectively, Your Excellency, distinguished senators, they depend on functional primary care centers and functional secondary care centers. It is not that the services are deteriorated, but the services are overcrowded, people are not happy. But the main problem, Your Excellency, is an appeal. I believe that we will use this opportunity to address the problem of healthcare care system. And that is the problem of the states. The states have literally abandoned healthcare, care so that everything is now handled by federal. As of today, 14 states are yet to show interest in the basic care provision fund. 